is being besieged by a group of anti-do-anything-about-COVID truckers called the Freedom Convoy. A so-called Freedom Convoy. A so-called Freedom Convoy of truckers. The police chief is calling it a nationwide insurrection driven by madness. This city is under siege. They are now calling it an occupation. A threat to democracy, uh, an insurrection, sedition, sedition, insurrection, a threat to democracy. We've heard it called a nationwide insurrection. Mm-hmm. This is kind of our insurrection by air horn moment. <laughs> it's, I think it's part of the globalization of Trumpism. It's a cult. <laughs> yes, it is. Residents say they feel like hostages. There hasn't been as much violence as some had perhaps projected, but that does not necessarily mean that it has been peaceful. I think that DeSantis, Boebert, they have blood on their hands on this. These bodies are not on the ground yet. Yeah. And they're being used as political props right now. When you demonize someone to that extent and you make them feel like an existential threat to you and your children, it's no wonder, again, that we get this kind of violence. This exact same language of grooming and pedophilia targeting the LGBTQ community, it kills. And I'm just wondering, what could I have done different? Seriously, as reporters, what can we do different? I think we have to have a come to Jesus moment here. Uh, as reporters, there is no inward reflection here. It's just, you know, continue to use these people as props. Continue to use the grief of these people as props. The MAGA movement is a threat. This means war. That is where we are. We are at war with these people. These folks are evil. This is literally what conservative white folks do when they don't get their way. They turn violent. The extremists that we're dealing with every single day, we've got to kill and confront that movement. It is a danger to our democracy, it is a danger to our way of life. These crazed, deranged folks who want to impart evil in every facet of our society. And this is why it could be more dangerous than 1860 or the 1930s. Clearly, you know, this is a um, literally call to arms. And it was no raid on your home. A peaceful search that they gave them a heads up on. Peaceful search. I don't think there was any politics involved. This appears to be a nonpartisan process. The Justice Department is returning to its historical position as a law enforcement agency above politics, trying to do the right thing. These attacks on the FBI are just very sort of out there and outlandish. That's why we have law enforcement to actually bring fascists to justice. It's all legal, it's all lawful, it's not a raid. They didn't, you know, they, they're, they're not there improperly or unlawfully. Have sort of treated this platform as like the, the town square, the public forum. It's not anymore, it's Elon Musk's and he's gonna do with it what he wants and it's bad for the rest of us. Ever since Elon Musk took over Twitter, we've seen it devolve into something that is nothing close to truth and nothing close to unifying in the country as we see it today. And here we have something as important as Twitter, which is an important platform, um, now descending into the hellscape that he claimed it wouldn't be. My tummy meter says there's something just not great about this. Let's say they reinstate Donald Trump onto Twitter. Yeah. Would you leave the service? Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I don't I don't need to be there for that. When Elon Elon Musk says, wow, this is about free speech. It seems to me that it's about free speech of straight white men. And he himself is a troll. So his idea of freedom means freedom to be a jerk and to be cruel and to have no one be able to stop you. It certainly feels like we're in the dying days of this platform unless something changes quickly. You need controls on this. You need regulation. You cannot let these guys control discourse in this country.